Hi friends, Dean here with Escape to Gaming. Today I thought I'd take the time and show my new TV setup where I've been talking about how I wanted to get it out in the garage and uh, a little bit of a project. I had to paint the TV as well. It had stains and spills and things all over. I tried to clean it and I could not get the stains off. The stains over the sides coming down the speakers and their paint splatter on it from whether people had painted their other apartment and just it looked terrible. So I had to clean the thing down and I got some uh, kind of a nickel colored flat silver spray paint that matched almost perfectly the factory Sony Trinitron color and repainted it with about five coats of paint. Really turned out nice. It had a little Trinitron silk screen logo up here which is now gone sadly and I had to paint over the little chrome letters but I masked this off, the little panel down here with these buttons and I masked off all the black on the chassis itself. <clears throat> it looks like a brand new TV. It really turned out nice goes nice with the gunmetal uh, shelves out here that I've painted. Uh, <clears throat> when I first got this TV, God, four years ago or so, I uh, found it for 25 bucks. I love this TV. It's a really quality Sony Trinitron. It's got an exceptional picture. It's got the progressive scan. The, uh, it's got the built-in stereo surround sound. Um, it has S-video cable, <clears throat> several composite cable ports, as well as it has one set of ports for uh, component cables as well, which is really nice. So I could play my PPS2 out here, or original Xbox through component cables. Uh, I all have a brand new GameCube S-Video uh, cable, which I can also use for the Wii. And I can play it, you know, through the front here, through my S-Video cable. So it's <clears throat> really a nice setup. Uh, what happened, We, you know, I had it in the game room, and I had a little beach chair. You sit really low to the ground. And before my back surgery, I could sit there as uncomfortable as it was. I could play for like an hour or so tops, and it got kind of uncomfortable at that point. But after the surgery, there was just no way. So now I'm stuck with not one, but two. Then I got a second 32-inch Toshiba TV, which I was stuck with in the game room. And I didn't know what to do with it. My wife hated those TVs. She's not, she's not against me having my game room and everything, but she just would come in and see these big bulky TVs that were not being used. And she says, you've got to get rid of these TVs. They drive me crazy. Every time she'd go in and vacuum, you know, she's bumping into them. And she <clears throat> really wanted to get rid of them. Uh, it was kind of something that she had an issue with. Uh, she doesn't mind me having it out here. She just didn't want that TV in there. She, I, as it is, I play games in the house. I play games over by my computer. So <clears throat> there's a lot of gaming going on in the house. But uh, last summer, a friend of mine who I... We both follow classic game room, and that's how we met. I didn't realize he was right here in town. I've known him for years, and so we hooked up, and he had a, a classic gaming setup out in his garage. He had a couple really nice pinball machines and freestanding arcade machines, as well as an old analog TV out in his garage. And when I went over to his house, I knocked on the door. There was no one there, and he had a, a, a garage which was separate from the house. And I heard, thought I heard gaming going on. I looked in the garage. Oh, he's in the garage. Cool. And he was in there gaming, playing his, you know, older, you know, older classic systems. And I thought it was a great idea. And I was like, oh, I should do that. I should put my TV out there. So we recently sold a 32-inch Toshiba. I wanted to keep the Sony because I really love the picture on it and the sound and everything. <clears throat> so kept it. Um, I painted it last weekend, kind of cleaned everything up. I took my VCR. I got an RCA VCR from, I think it's from 1996. And uh, it's actually, it's one of the good Panasonic made, Panasonic made ones for RCA, and I don't know, Quasar, a couple different companies. They made basically the same model and put different names on it. But the Panasonic VCRs are the best. It has the aluminum chassis in it, where a lot of the other ones had plastic that would wear out. It's the aluminum chassis, all the little tracks slide real nice. And so I took it apart, cleaned it, took rubbing alcohol and cleaned all the little, you know, rollers and spindles and the, the head of it and everything <clears throat> really turned out nice put it back together tested it it works fantastic I'm gonna try to get another VCR but I have it permanently hooked up here I've got a um, my friend Steve Baker donated me one of the new little PS1 minis or classics you know the original the, the downsized one kind of like the or the slim I guess they call it PS1 slim which I've never used until now I didn't even know if it worked uh, so I hooked it up. <clears throat> it works great. It's fantastic. So it's really, even though I have two other original fat model PS1s, and I'm not even sure if one of those works. I think one of them might not work. I'm not sure. And I also have a Sega Genesis out here that has ported with a stereo setup 
So it has, a, you know, the left and right channel RCA cables for stereo as well, which is really nice. So I thought this would be a perfect setup for this. And I love having the PlayStation 1 out here in particular, even though I could hook up a PS2 or Xbox. To me, I think of an analog TV, I think of the mid-90s. I really think of, you know, the 90s and playing the PlayStation 1. That's really where I kind of came into my own with gaming. That's where I really ratcheted up gaming, I mean, big time. I played a lot of stuff on my... Commodore 64 via the TV, the little RF cable thing out back, but in 95, when I bought my, my other big TV, I had a 35-inch Hitachi UltraVision, which I loved, and playing Twisted Metal and Road Rash and Agile Warrior and the first Need for Speed and all the other ones, it was so fantastic. I had the, the greatest of memories. And so it's nice having the garage. Now I finally have a place to come out and to play these old retro games, which I'm really excited about. <clears throat> so it's been kind of a labor of love. Um, it, it's a nice garage. I, I, you know, I've got it's got nice lighting out here. I still have to work on my mural and get it finished. Uh, <clears throat> but it's really cozy out here. It gets a little hot in the summer and a little cold in the winter. But I have several little, you know, floor heaters. I can put a little floor heater out here while I'm playing games, you know, in the wintertime. And in the summer, you can just put a fan. It has an automatic... Uh, exhaust fan up on the ceiling up here so anything above 80 degrees it turns on automatically and draws a hot air out which helps it doesn't make it ideal but makes it a lot cooler so <clears throat> I thought it'd be a great place for retro gaming because sometimes I'm only gonna play for 45 minutes or an hour or so in some of these games where my other games like Mad Max I'll play for you know four or five hours straight on the couch inside so <clears throat> it makes a great solution for my gaming problem so I'm so happy to have this TV out here now. It's hard to video this TV. It looks much better in person than it does via this camera here, but uh, all I can say is it really has a great picture. Very bright, really high contrast, good detail. Uh, for an analog TV, you really can't go wrong. <clears throat> One of the things I thought I would mention <clears throat> is I made the video and I you know, was talking about uh, Fallout 76 and the PS1 Classic and talking about my plans for the garage here and kind of getting it set up as a kind of an, an augmented, you know, game room. Uh, and I was talking about the PlayStation 1, you know, the games that many of them, you know, will appear dated. Now, again, I, I'm, to me, that's like the elephant in the room. And I had a friend of mine, as well as, you know, a viewer, commented in my comments and said, well, Dean, I, I really disagree. I don't like that term dated. Um, to me, if a game is good, it's good, period. It doesn't, you know, it shouldn't have a date. And, and believe me, I completely agree with that. That's why I can go back to 1995 or 96, like it was yesterday, and within 30 minutes or so, I'm right back there where I was in 95 on my couch playing, you know, Twisted Metal or, you know, Road Rash or any of my classic, you know, Return Fire, any of my favorites. So I... <clears throat> Because my audience is split up, it's not all retro gamers. I have a lot of modern gamers, PC gamers. Some are collectors, some aren't. Some only have the latest console. So I, I try to speak in broader terms for everyone. So I'm not trying to say, and I'm not against emulation. If people want to get those Raspberry Pi things, I mean, I don't understand much about them. I have a modded Xbox, and I don't even know how he installed the games in it or the ROMs or whatever. I know nothing about it. I told my friend, if you can install it and hook it all up and do the coin ops, you know, eight for me or whatever, that would be great. <clears throat> and he did, but I have no idea how to add anything to it. Supposedly, I guess with the PlayStation 1 Classic as well as like the Super NES Mini Classic, you can add more games into the library and the hard, little hard drive or whatever the hell's in it. I, I know nothing about that kind of stuff. I'm not a technical person at all. But I, <clears throat> I didn't want to take a little bit of a time and in the way of like a video response and address, I was going to make a lengthy comment, on, and I still have yet to go in. I've been so busy lately. We've had family here over the holidays and just chaos working on the house and getting so many projects done before we had family here yesterday. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I'm just now getting, I'm going to have to go back. I haven't even had time to sit and answer all the wonderful comments on my last video, which I'm going to do soon. But I thought I'd take the time to address one of the comments and, and talking about is it necessary to play? And one of the arguments that he made is he goes, he believes that older games, these older games should be played, like Return Fire and, you know, Twisted Metal, um, you know, Jet Moto. All of these games should be played on the TV that 
came with those consoles at that time. They really get the most out of it. This is what these games were not designed to be played on an LCD big flat screen, you know, 55 inch TV. They were made to be played on these older analog TVs and it's a valid point. I completely agree. I, I, I prefer playing the fifth gen games and, and older games on the analog TV for that reason. I, I like the 4 by 3 format. I like the, you know, this, this format of screen with these older games. Uh, but, but I think not everyone has the ability to have or has the room or the interest in going out and finding a working old analog TV. These things are heavy as fuck. I was afraid my wife was going to drop this thing, helping me carry it out here, and especially getting it up onto the shelf. I was really like, one moment I thought she was going to drop it. I'm like, oh God, you know, I just, it was too big and bulky for me to pick up by myself and position it perfectly on the shelf. And so I really needed her help. I didn't have anyone here to help me at the time when I did it. <clears throat> but, you know, I, <clears throat> For me, it's worth the hassle of having at least one of these analog TVs because it is wonderful to return to it, but not everyone has the room or the desire to have older TVs, and not everyone's into the collecting. You know, I've had a lot of my videos, people say, yeah, it's nice, I mean, you have a video game collection, Dean, but frankly, we don't have the room for it. That's why I buy my games digitally, you know. So I try to validate everyone's point of view. It's not that one person's right and everyone else has to be wrong. I don't need to demonize other people's points of view to validate my own. <clears throat> but I will say that I agree with, <clears throat> with my friend's point that I prefer playing the older games, especially like, you know, I got the Sega Genesis here and I can bring in my Super NES. Those games look fantastic on a TV like this. And if you can swing it, if you have the room, they're dirt cheap, you can get them for 20 to 30 bucks all day long, you know, for a nice one even. And if you can, you know, if you have the room for it, and it's, you know, it's kind of an extravagant thing. It's just like I have my friend that has a big stand-up arcade machines. Believe me, I'd love to have one, but I just don't have room. If I was lucky, I could probably get rid of some of these shelves in the corner and maybe squeeze one over here, one free, you know, stand-up machine of Galaga or something like that. But <clears throat> I just realistically don't have the room, you know. It's just something that I'll have to be a fond memory and I'll probably never be able to have you know one of those full freestanding arcade machines as much as I'd love one. So it's not that I, I can't appreciate it or wouldn't like to have a whole garage filled with them <clears throat> but I, I just can't do it. It's just not in the cards for me. So not everyone's into it for that reason. So I, you know, I use the term dated because many people will view them as dated including a lot of current gamers. And they have a hard time staying engaged. I don't, because I have a vivid imagination, and I can be taken right back to where I was playing Twisted Metal 2 the day that it came out. Staying up all night playing it too, by the way. I literally told breakfast the next morning. I stayed up all night long playing this. My friend Chris came over. He spent the night. My wife, we had to get up and go to work I think the next day. My wife wasn't thrilled about it. But, you know, that's, that's where I was back then. I was in that party mode and had a lot of fun. We, we, a lot of entertainment and weekends kind of revolved around that PlayStation 1 and our couch or sectional and, you know, the stereo and the movies and the good times that we had back then at that time. So because of that, I, I like returning to nostalgia and I like, the, you know, having this. Uh, I like my modded Xbox. I think that six-gen games you can play e either or. I think they look fine on a, a, an LCD screen. Uh, they really they look exceptional here too. I mean, I can play them either way, uh, but the six gen ones I, I prefer to play. Believe it or not, on an LCD TV because they can look good. You can get upwards of 720p on some of those Xbox games, which really do look good. And even some of the lower, you know, <clears throat> ones that have a lower resolution really aren't that bad. They, they look fine. So I can go either way with that. But the older ones, the fifth gen and down, I definitely like playing them on this kind of hardware. So that's kind of my video response to that. Um, I hate to use the terms like dated, because to me I don't feel that, that the games themselves are dated. And he made a good point. If a game is good then, it's just as good now. Nothing changes. A good game is timeless, and it's a good, it's a good point. Just like a good book or a good piece of art is timeless. It doesn't change. People change, and their perceptions of quality and their perceptions of reality and what's fun and what's not fun I have some friends that have told me, and even some of them are even collectors, oh, dude, I cannot stand the PlayStation 1. I don't get it. I think the games look ugly. I don't see how you can get into them. 
and you know, because maybe they 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 started gaming with the PlayStation Two era, you know, or maybe or even the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. So it depends on where you're at, you know, who you are, where you're at. I've been there since the beginning, since Pong, and even long before Pong. So for me, I've enjoyed the process of seeing gaming evolve and to turn into what it is today. And I'd like to continue to see it progress in the future as long as I can own my games and it's not a, as games as a service as an always online game. That's my only issue with that. But... Um, so, you know, I got my gaming set up here. I'm really excited about it. I grabbed a few games. Now, this is maybe a third of my PlayStation 1 games. Like, I've got all the Jet Motos I haven't played. I barely... I remember the first one really well, and I remember the second one, but I've never played the third one. So I've got the third one. I got the second one. So I'm dying to play these. I should start experimenting. I want to get in and start enjoying these games. Now, this I have a... This is my, my original case, which I made for Return Fire. This is the one I donated... The classic game room years ago, and then they sent this one back. I took the old little manual and cut the cover down to fit in a jewel case and put the disc in here. Back then, I didn't care. I threw the tall boxes out, and I wanted them all in the same size. So when I got the later uh, PS1 games, everything would match size-wise in my little you know CD rack that I had at the time. So I'm, <clears throat> this, I got to go get the disc out of my tall box and bring it out here. But I'm dying to really cannot wait to play Return Fire. This game does not play good on the PlayStation 2. It has a, the real early PlayStation 1 games seem to have issues playing on the PlayStation 2, and I would imagine probably the PlayStation 3 as well. So because of that, I like having this little PS1 Classic or Slim or whatever the hell it is, because now I can play these games the way they were meant to be played on a PlayStation 1. That's another thing I kind of agree with, is I prefer playing the games on the original hardware whenever possible. It's not always possible or convenient, but I do like that. Uh, so I got that. I got the original, yeah, Twisted Metal 2, which I'm playing. I've got the first Twisted Metal as well. I've got the tall box as well as a second copy that's, you know, just the, the regular uh, jewel, jewel case. Um, need a little drink here. I'm thirsty. Dark Forces. I can't wait to play this. And I bought this a digital copy for the PlayStation 3 and started playing it on there. But it's just, it doesn't look as good on the PlayStation 3. It just, and that's again another good reason why these games really look best and play best on their correct hardware and television, like this analog. Critical Depth, I just showed this recently in my last video. I love this game to death. It's so cool. I love the music, the menus, very atmospheric. You really feel like you're underwater, even with an older game like this. Very cool. I definitely have got to delve back into my nuclear and Soviet strike. These are so cool. I love the strike games. Even going back to the Genesis, Desert Strike and all those. Uh, <clears throat> Duke Nukem Time to Kill, my favorite PlayStation 1 game. I've got to have that, put it back in. I got Road Rash. <clears throat> I'd like to get the tall box of this again, but this is my my other, my other probably my third copy of Road Rash that I bought. <clears throat> Just a year ago, I finally found, I haven't played it yet, I'm anxious to play this. Road Brash Jailbreak. This I've played all the way through multiple times. This I have not. I'm very excited about playing this Road Rash Jailbreak. I think there was a, a an N64 uh, Road Rash, which I think was very close to the graphics on this, if I remember right. I, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, <clears throat> Road Rash 3D. This one I really like, and I've played this all the way through twice. Uh, it's a really cool game. Very, very different from the first Road Rash, but just as cool. Uh, it's just very different physics and dynamics to it, but very fun, really a lot of fun. And then I wrap it up, I, I brought in a, a bunch of, now I have the tall box of the first Need for Speed, but I, I that one I know pretty well. I kind of want to go back and playing Need for Speed 2. So I thought I'd put a Need for Speed 2, I'd get Need for Speed 3, Hot Pursuit, as well as High Stakes. And now that I have the analog controller, and that's a mistake, by the way, I made in my last video, which my friend corrected me as well, is I kept calling it the analog. When I think of analog TV, I think of the older. Analog being like the older, the original format. But with the controller, it was, it was different. Apparently, this is the analog <coughs> controller here that has the thumbsticks with the analog movement. So that's what, that, that's what I meant. when I had it reversed. I had it backwards at the time. I mean, it fucked up dyslexic head. But uh, <coughs> for, this is... This, this controller I had with one of my fat 
PlayStation 1s. When my friend gave me the little <clears throat> mini slim one, it didn't come with a controller, but I already had one. So and I, I thought I had more, but I think this is the only one that I have. I might have another box with more controllers. But for right now, I'm real happy. At least I've got this, so I can play a lot of these newer PlayStation 1 analog control games with this. It looks like it's an excellent controller. It's nice and straight. These things aren't hammered like they are in quite a few of them. It feels very substantial, like a really well-made controller. So at least I've got this. I'd like to get another one so my wife and I can come out here and play some split-screen split twisted metal like the old days. <clears throat> She's actually happy to see it out here, which is kind of cool. So I had one friend, oh, it looks like you're being relegated to the garage now. Your wife doesn't want you in the house playing games. That's not the case at all. We, she watches me play games on the couch, you know, virtually every night. <clears throat> and she loves gaming. and like She likes to watch me do it. She's just mentally fried from doing management stuff all day. And so she comes home. She doesn't want to deal with mental gymnastics and, you know, gaming and stuff like that. But she likes to sit and watch me play it while she's on her phone or <laughs> whatever. But <clears throat> anyway, I'm really pumped about this. It's a, it's a dream come true. Finally, I got my <clears throat> retro set up where I want it, where I need to have it. So now I want to start picking up a few more PlayStation 1 games, uh, some more Super NES. I've got quite a few Genesis games, which I'm real happy with, but I definitely, I've only got three um, Super NES games right now. I've got Outlander, I've got Nigel Mansell's World Championship Formula 1 game, which is one of my favorite Super NES games. And I've got something else. I can't remember what the other one is. Uh, uh, Alien 3. Yeah, i got Alien 3. That's the other one, which I really love. I love that Alien 3. <clears throat> so eventually I'll get more, I'll get F-15 Strike Eagle and some of the pole position and the other ones and Star Fox and what have you. But for right now I'm very happy with what I have. So hope you like my little tour of the garage. <clears throat> I don't have anything yet for my mural, <clears throat> but I'll have something soon for that. Uh, <clears throat> it's been a dream come true, that's all I can say. I'll give you a quick little mini tour of the garage right here at the end of the video for those that have stuck it out to the end. Thank you so much for watching and uh, <clears throat> enjoy your games. Here's a quick little tour of my garage. Thanks. So <clears throat> here's the TV. It all sits in nice in here. I've got down here, I've got my RCA VCR, my little PlayStation 1. I've got my Sega Genesis. With, it's got the stereo outputs in the back. So you can play in stereo through these RCA jacks. It's an excellent condition. My friend Clint did that for me. <clears throat> So, and these are all my VHS tapes, so I can watch a lot of old movies out here. In fact, I think I've got one out here now. I just, just to see the VCR, I put in this uh, uh, Independence Day widescreen. It's a THX tape, really good quality, high quality VHS tape. I get tons of these. So I put it in, it looks good. So the VCR works good. <clears throat> I've got some games out here to get started. I've got my Ghetto Blaster out here. This thing cranks. The Sony Ghetto Blaster plays cassettes as well as CDs. Um, I've, I've found a couple new memory cards. I don't know which ones are which, so I've got to go in and check and see what's on these memory cards. Some of these are PS1 cards. In the other room, I've got my PlayStation 2 cards. But this is my setup. These are my shelves. I've got a little mini fridge out there that has like you know root beer in it. And I've got some beers for friends that come over, even though I really don't drink anymore. I've got some neon, I painted some stripes, and got some old license plates and artwork up here. Uh, <clears throat> got my you know, wife's little area where she does has her laundry, so I got a little mini sink out here and have all her Betty Boop stuff. And some more you know, beer signs and there's all of our cleaning crap. <clears throat> and then here's the new mural area. I've got a bunch of crap out here right now. These are all my art supplies. I've got to go through this and kind of sort through them and I'm getting some of the paints already ready to start painting this mural. So we're going to get on that soon, and then I've got, you've seen this before, I've shown my posters, I've got a bunch of, you know, old <clears throat> gaming posters out here I got from GameStop, they gave me quite a while back. So, even with two cars in here, I can still play games. <clears throat> the cars fit in here really well, there's plenty of extra room, and I've got my rafters up there. I keep all like my Christmas stuff and holiday stuff I keep up there. <clears throat> but there's room. Even with my wife's car here, there is room. I can sit on that stool right in front of the TV and play games or what have you. So it's a nice little setup. I'm real happy with it. It's kind of a dream come true. And now I can finally 
uh, enjoy my retro gaming the way it was meant to be done on the right equipment <clears throat> with the right consoles and uh, all that good stuff which is good time so thanks for watching guys and enjoy your games <laughs>